temat spraw bieżących związanych bądź z funkcjonowaniem naszego działu, bądź ogólnie z funkcjonowaniem w CTE. Raczej to drugie. Znaczy, no, to już tam, nie, nie wnikam w szczegóły. Eee, więc tak, żeby, żeby już nie przedłużać, eee, zaczynamy. Eee, pan eee, magister eee, Jakub Zygmunt, tak? Komunius University Bratysława i tak jak wcześniej powiedziałam, referat o chciałbym. Zapraszam. Okay, so welcome everybody, ladies and gentlemen. So my name is said by Jakub Sigmund and I'm from Communist University, Department of Environmental Ecology. We are a team, we focus on the trips or Boschanatki. Chernatki. So I will tell you something about the phenotypic plasticity of trips and some basic about what is phenotypic plasticity, where is like uh, bioindication important, what are the trips, but yeah, here is the overview of my of my today's presentation. So the first part, I will just say something like a, a bit about the, the trips, then like what is the bioindication, what are, who are the bioindicators, what is phenotypic plasticity, what is important, then a bit more like the uh, research area, the methods, results, <coughs> few, few uh, sentences about the artificial neural networks. Uh, then we will be like small part about the, the another research which we do was the methodical factors of uh, detection of reliability and then small discussion and conclusion. So what are the trips? Trips are really small insects. I don't know if like everybody know them, but I brought like small specimen so you can really see that it's really small. It's like a small dog. It's, you know, it's not dirty, it's the animal. <laughs> so worldwide we know around 6,000 uh, species which are really live really hidden and sometimes they're like a lot of people don't even know that they're somewhere or they're everywhere and they're between one to three millimeters and the biggest are like 15 millimeters but they can be smaller and really really not visible but just with eyes so we divide it to two suborders it's a trebrantia and tubulifera uh, which can we distinguish really easily that tubulifera have like this and tubus and different wings, so like really, really basics. Uh, mostly there are herbivores and, and fungivores, and sometimes, but not, not really often, there are like facultative or obligate predators. The, the, the why they are important is that they are the crop pests, so they, they make a really like economical, or they are uh, important from the econ economical thinking, because they are making damage for the crops and People don't want to do that, so they're trying to recognize it and they make this uh, uh, destroying of crops uh, smaller. Uh, and the biggest problem is that they are the transmitter of, of those viruses. Their process is like really like from the egg to the adult goes like from the se uh, first larva, second larva, propupa and pupa. And during the time, it's also the, the phenotypic plasticity works really like really often during these parts. So the how the environment will look during this. These, uh, these, these stages, that's like will be the, the results. Uh, so bioindication and bioindicator. Uh, bioindication is the, is the science where, the, where you study the ability of organisms to identify changes of ecosystems. So if you have like some, some, some changes and you can recognize it by the, by the changes of like the environment themselves, but you can, for example, use the animals. And if the animal or the, of the species have the ability to to uh, like um, to identify these these changes. Then can be called the bioindicator. And here is like the definitions because everybody likes the definitions. So it's the organism or the communities. So it doesn't have to be just one individual, but it can be the, the population or the communities together with their life functions, which correlate with the environmental factors so close, closely that they can work as the indicator. So that you don't have to make some research like on the environment but you can for example uh, just study your like, your species and you can then for example say that there i don't know is there is a residation or it's like a higher temperature or the climate change or, or so on and because even people like to classify everything so spellberg in 1991 made the one of the classification which we are using where he divided this uh, uh, bio indicator to five different groups the first one are sentinels, which are, I think, the historical 
best known, as you know, like the canary birds, where the miners were taking them to the to the mines, <laughs> and if they were singing, everything was okay. If not, then it was not really safety anymore. But now, because we are humans, so we are not using like these animals in this way. So we are using more like some machines and so on. Detectors are the second one, which we are more most of, or we are interested the most in that, and are the yeah, compared to the compared to the the first one. Are their occurrence it's it's uh, it's normal so they normally live in some environment because the first one you just have to take it or introduce somewhere and then you see the the response so detectors for example uh, were like the atomata where they were checking their size and comparing it with the pollution of the of their water ecosystem another one are exploiters so they're with their presence or absence they are saying you something about the environment the the fourth one are the accumulators, so for example some, some species of anadonta where they can uh, accumulate some, some metals and for example there were like in, in London in Thames there were they found that this, this anadonta has like 20 times more of cadmium than, than it's normally so they can see that there is something wrong. The last one is are the, the BRC organisms are the organisms which you have in the laboratory so there is uh, one thing that the, the synergic effect which you can find in the environment is excluded. So you can, for example, see how it will change when there is like change in the in the temperature. But the synergic effect, which is like in the real or in situ situations, is like excluded. So we are mostly using the detectors because we want to like measure it and then see like how, what's the what's the indication of that. So let's change for the phenomenon of uh, phenotypic plasticity. The important is from, for the taxonomic importance because in the history, uh, a lot of species were given a different name. For example, to 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 some species were given like twenty names, and after that realized that there is a phenotypic plasticity, they realized that it's just one species. So from this point of view, it's it's really important to understand the role of the phenotypic plasticity and how does it work. Again, some. Uh, um, Definitions, so it's the capacity of single genotype to exhibit a range of phenotypes in response to variability in the environment. So when you have like some genotype which the animals should look the same, but they're not, because there is like some changes which are influenced by the, by the environment. The, the advanced advantages of the, of the phenotypic plasticity is that it works like a, like a buffering mechanism against the, against the environmental changes. So if you have like some changes in the environment that doesn't have to be necessary that they will be excluded or something will happen. So they will just get used to that and then that's in that way they can survive. The phenotypic plasticity you can find everywhere and it's important as I said like for the ecology taxonomy evolution and of population of the species. And here are some, uh, some examples of how does it look like. So, for example, here we have the caterpillars, and depending on what they are feeding on, they look like that. Or, for example, on the butterflies, the left one is from the uh, wet season, and the, on the right side, it's from the it's from the uh, dry season. So they really look that they are not the same species, but actually they are. They are just different forms where the phenotypic plasticity works. And here on on this um, this chart, we can see that how we, we can uh, show the, this phenotypic plasticity, we are using the reaction norms. So number one is like number one, some, some environment, and there are some change. And you can see that, for example, the, the trade or the character can increase or can uh, decrease or can increase less or more or can be the same. So there is no plasticity of this, of this character. Uh, we can now <coughs> do different forms, like continues when they are just small, bigger, 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 so it's like some, some no normal process, or there are like two different or more different forms, which called polyphenism. So we can see that in, uh, in for example, locust, when you have this green one, on the left uh, is like solitary one, and the right one, it's like make the aggregates when they're like really offending and really destroying the crops, and it's the same species, but they look different because of, of some environment change. Uh, the and or, or another one which is like most best known is like the honeybee when you have the queen, drone, and workers is the same species but they're like looks different and have different roles. 
Uh, phenotypic plasticity is a quantitative character, so it can be choose like under the or can be under the natural uh, um, natural selection. So sometimes or some authors saying that if the the species have high ability of the phenotypic plasticity, they have higher um, possibility to to for example survive some of the changes. And uh, <clears throat> it's also enable to do the species to enter their their Nike or Nike. Nike? And so, therefore, like if some there is some change, like for example, it will be uh, the the weather change that it will be colder. They would not definitely or necessarily have to like leave. They can just get used to that. And the ability, if they have this ability, is better for them, or is like for better for them to to survive. Or for example, if there is like the concurrence with another species and they are feeding on the same, if this animal or the species is able to to change their their feeding habits. Then it's like better for them because they can stay on this, on this locality. Okay, phenotypic plasticity in the in the trips. Uh, the really like the good example is these uh, forms which like differ in too much between one. It's, it's mostly just between the the males that we have these odimerous forms and the gynoid forms, where the od odimerous forms there just looks really. That they have, for example, the four legs are really enlarged, but experimentally. So you really, for example, this species was given like 20 names in a different genre, and it's totally like the 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 people who are like dealing with this was a bit lost, and then they found that it's just one species, it's just the the forms how they looks because of some environment. Uh, any abiotic or biotic uh, factor can serve the to induce the plasticity, so it can be there for like. Uh, humidity or occurrence of the predators, temperature or different different or every 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 biotic or abiotic factor can can be the starter or the trigger. They normally then uh, act on the biochemistry, morphology, physiology or behavior. So morphology they can be smaller, bigger, or behavior for example like the locals they can be like uh, solitaire or can be like make small aggregates. Uh, any trait of the Insect can show the phenotypic plasticity, so it can be on the antenna, it can be on every, 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 uh, or virtually on any any trait of the of the insects. But what's the the biggest problem? It's too difficult or too differences to to separate various environments from from this from these changes. So we know that, for example, the the foreleg is bigger, and we know what's the what for example change between the locality. But to find and be one hundred percent sure that it's, for example, just temperature and not uh, another factor, it's really hard. It's really easy in the organism in the laboratory, but that's, it's like sometimes not really useful to, to see it in the, in the real nature. And for example, another is like in the color of the trip, it's like Frankinella, when you have the, the form during the, the, the summer or during the, the winter. So they, they doesn't look like really, really different, but the color is also one of the traits which can change. So why do we measure? To, we want to measure to, to say that, for example, this is the detector. So we can say that we, can, we will measure it, and then we see that there are significant differences between the localities in, in a size of some, of some characters. So then we can say, like, for example, this, this uh, or the occurrence of some, in our, uh, in our study, the occurrence of some heavy metals have influence on the, on the size of the, of the species or like on the individuals. So we want to find these triggers of the phenotypic plasticity and then so confirm that the, these species have the bioindication potential. So let's come from the, from the theoretical part to our practical part. So our research area is located close to the, in a closed uh, gold antimony mine, uh, which is close to the city of Pezinok, which is like on the east south of of Slovakia, so close to the, our capital city, and the 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 why we are like making this research there is that the, here because it's like the ore dump is the presence of uh, more than ten thousand tons of arsenic and uh, uh, and some tons of antimony and other other metals. So it's quite. Uh, uh, the, the pollution is there like quite high and we want to see like how this pollution can affect the the morphometric variables of the of the trips. So we choose three different localities 
with a different contamination of, of heavy metals. So here you can see on the table uh, are like different uh, substances and these are the, we measure these numbers from the bodies of the trips. So this is how, how, man, how much of the of different substances have the, the trips inside their bodies. So you can see that it's, it's really very between the localities and it's not that some of the locality have like or one more locality have the most of the of, of the substances. So we want to really find out like what which of the of the substances have can have the influence of the of the morphometric variables. So here how does it look like? So it's like three three localities which are not so far from each other. And um, there it looks like I don't know if you can see but it's you can see it here. Uh, that it's like some some uh, stairs. So how they were making this, this dump is like higher and higher. So the even like this, the the localities are different in this this point of view. But people are really really environmental thinking. So they start using these holes after the road or after the mining to to collect there the garbage, which is like in some kind. Welcome in Slovakia. It's legal because they are saying that it's the the garbage from the from the like buildings and nobody is really checking what is inside the cars. So as you can see, the red color of the of the stream is really uh, <clears throat> healthy. So here you can see like the localities. Firstly, we was thinking that the reference uh, will have any influence of the of the substances, but it was not true. So now we have to deal with that. So material and methods. Uh, we were using three different methods on the beginning. We were like America traps, uh, swing net, and sieving of the fallen leaves. After a few months, we realized that the best is sweeping net because for our uh, we want to get as much as as possible of one species, so we can measure just one species. The America traps was really cool. It's I don't know. It's like the we made it really homemade. So we took like the the cups from the mustard and just hang it somewhere with with the liquid. But the problem was that the Setonias were like really interested in this, and they totally fooled the fooled this cup. So was not we are not able to catch any other species because there was like really in one cup was like fifty of them. They were trying to I don't know tie that or something. So we just kept with the with the sweeping net, which was the best. For example, in one day we collect like three hundred specimens, which is like for our purpose the the best. The research period was from April 2013 to September 2015, so we finished just this, this, this year and we will continue next year again since uh, April. The, the periodicity of the, of the sampling was like two, between two or three weeks. It really depends on the weather because you have to wait at least maybe two or three days after the rain, after like the, the, the plants will be dry and the, the, <clears throat> the, the trips will be there and you can collect as much as you can. After we like came from the field, we have to go to the laboratory, so make some preparation, like the slides I showed you, then the determination of all our specimens. So we finally collect like, like for these three years, like 1,605 specimens, which belongs to 35 species. And more, more than 50% were Heotips manicatus, which lives almost every, in every, you know, on whole Europe, this is from Fauna Europea, just not in Belarus, Moldavia, and Belgium, which are like no data, so probably they live there. So, in this point of view, it's really good bio indicator because one of the good thing on a, or how to find the good bio indicator is that it lives almost everywhere, or really or you can find it everywhere. Because if you make like on species which lives in your country, it's really really cool, but you can use it in like worldwide. So here you have the the T chart of the of our, our spe uh, species. So you can see like here with Manicatus is like really winning in the amount. And the rest was like the Anamphotus obscurus and Aptinus rufus, which were not that abundant like here with Manicatus. So, no. so after we determined all the specimens, we, we wanted to start with the, with the measurements. 70% of the, of, the, of the specimens were just females. So we decided to, to measure them first. And we, after like, uh, as before, or based on, on, the, 
on the uh, research of Fedor et al. We choose 40 morphomet uh, tree variables, which you can see on this uh, on, on this picture. So there was like head width, clavus land, clavus width, forewind land. So yeah, you can see, I don't want to read it all, but it was like 14 really often using uh, morphometry variables. And we measure them like all four, or we were trying if it's possible to measure them all 14 on every specimen. And for the beginning to not, like it will not take so much time. So we choose just 100 specimens from each locality to, 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 to make the, the statistic evaluation on, on this. So together 300 species from three different localities. Uh, we measure them with the, with the Microsoft uh, Leica, so not, it's like different than you have here. Uh, with software lasers and the static, statistical analysis were used uh, the Air Studio, which I just have to say that Air Studio is better than Air. It's the same, just it's really much much more help, help, helpful. So we were using the, the analysis like analysis of variance to distinguish like, if there is significant differences between the localities, um, principal component analysis, uh, artificial neural network, and the correlation analysis. Here you can see the, the, how it looks the table of the measurements, so all 14 uh, variables, and you can already see that the differences are like sometimes really, really big. So sometimes like, for example, the, the total body length is like from 1,000 to 1,400. So it's like differ a bit. Okay, so what's the results we, we got? We found that uh, second locality, uh, differ significantly in 10 uh, out of 14 characters, which we can see here on the box plots that uh, almost on like 10 of, out of 14, so about the, the highest significance was the total body length, uh, pronotum length, and pronotum width, which are like the C, or, uh, or also the like the overpositor length, but there is like big uh, discussion because. It's really depend on the how you make the slides. So there can be sometimes like the, the mistakes. And the rest is like also the, the distinction between between Otsori, which is also depends on the how you make the how the slides. But you can see that uh, 10 out of 14 variables were were like different. Uh, then we made like the correlation between the the each of the character to see, for example, if there is like not really high correlation with some characters so we can one of them exclude and we don't have to measure like all of them. But uh, the highest correlation was like 85% uh, or 80, 89 let's say, which is, uh, it's possible to not measure it but we will still keep it like all 14 for the, for the future because it will, we think that it will be more precise. But the highest correlation were like between the pronotum we, uh, width and the, the wing length so really, the, the results were like quite really logical. So if some parts of it are bigger, so it's normal that the, the another one which are correlated with that. And one just really thing is that we found a new species for Slovakia, so no new species at all, uh, Anaphotrypus gacillinus, gacillinus, which we we then uh, it's easier just make the some article for for like Polish magazine of Pismo Entomologiczne. So here we have like uh, principal component analysis, which is like quite the same, like the correlation. So you can see like on the on the graph like how they correlate and which uh, which characters or which variables are like closer to each other. So you can see here that the the uh, the distance between the ocelli is totally or it's a bit out of any any other correlation. This also like because of the 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 preparation process which can sometimes go wrong. Okay, so another thing what I want to start talking about is like the artificial neural network. To to uh, identify the trips we are normally using uh, as in different species the the dichotomous keys which are really okay but some problems are with them that sometimes they're in the languages which are not really famous, like for example, German. So for me, it's on the beginning, it was quite hard to understand all these, all these words. And the biggest problem is the interspecific variability. So sometimes there is written like some set is long from this number to this number, 
but sometimes this the, the the length can be higher because of the phenotypic plasticity which is not like this dichotomous kid not doesn't uh, work with this uh, then came the the ability of the dna which is the like, you can be then for maybe 100 percent sure but the problem is if you have like 1605 specimens and to make DNA test for every uh, each of them, it's like mostly impossible. So there is a role of artificial neural network, which are defined un under the um, artificial intelligence. And it's uh, the, the best uh, advice of this uh, uh, network is that they can learn from the experience and can generalize the observed patterns. So if you have like, uh, you, you measure, I don't know, 100 specimens, then you somehow learn the computer, how, how, or you give the data to the computer, and the computer will make, or this program will make some understanding between the characters, and then when you give it like, for example, test set, then it will tell you like, for example, in the, uh, <clears throat> here in this, in one of the research, they were trying to distinguish between the trips Sustimanis and trips Sambuzi, which are really similar uh, species, and uh, for this was, I think it was 99% or, or at least I don't think it was maybe 100% that it can distinguish between these two uh, two species. So it's, you just, uh, for sure, for the beginning you have to uh, determine it by yourself, then you learn the computer, and then the computer for in the next uh, specimens will tell you like which of the, which specimen or which species is it. We use it for our research and we got uh, between the two localities, the, the, the first locality and the second, just 70% of, uh, of accuracy, which is like when you, it's not really visible here, but here are the, the 3 d PCA graph and it's really like the data, are, there is no really like, this is the group one, this is the group three and this is the group three. But they're really together, and even for that, this, uh, this uh, artificial neural network were able to distinguish for 70% uh, between these localities. So, another uh, small what, uh, another topic I want to talk about is like these methodical factors of reliability. reliability. And uh, when, you, when you are measuring, or not, when you are determining the or identifying the, 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 the species, there is a problem with the phenotypic plasticity, as I said before. There can be the deformation, so there can be some, some, some mistakes with, the, with how the species looks like, or it can be the, the destruction of the material, so you lose some parts, like antenna or legs, so then you can, somehow you, you can get uh, stuck in the, in the dichotomous key. But there is also, like, we ask the question, like, do people measure in the same way, or do they get the same results? So we decided to make the small research to, 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 to take the one specimen of one trip, which you finally got. I hope that I will get it back. <laughs> and we asked like uh, some people uh, to measure this, uh, this specimen and we choose three different characters like distances between the ocelli, the width of the head and the length of the third antenna segment. And uh, we, as like different people with like with different age, different experience in the in the measuring, different uh, size, different uh, pressure and day. The pressure was made by the by the time. So we are saying like yeah yeah you have to do it now. We have to do it now. So people like under the stress. Just the best stress work for my mother when she afraid of dogs, and one friend came with the dog. So mother was really under the pressure, and then we were comparing just to 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 try it like different day like Monday and Friday so people are in Monday like full of energy and on Friday like today not really so we will see like if there is these differences so so together we made like 1290 measurements and we got the results with uh, an areas of government uh, like nodes of variance so here you see again the table how does it looks so we have the different measurements so Friday Friday and Monday and the slow and fast, so this like under the pressure or not. And the best results, like I don't know, one minute 41 to measure one set of, of these three variables. The, the results we've got are like quite interesting, interesting. So we can see that there are differences in the, like how measure people with different age and in different, like uh, or it's male or female. 
And once it was also, or, or, or two times, it was also the, the experience which, uh, which the, the people or some, somebody who is measuring it. So here we see the, 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 the result. The, the left one is from the distance between the oceli, where you can see that uh, men are measuring in the higher numbers, which is maybe because of the ego, so we have to measure more. Or uh, then you can see that if where people are older, they are measuring in a, uh, lower numbers, which we don't know how it's possible, but we got these results. But the, 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 the main thing which we got was the, the people with the experience are measuring uh, with a smaller standard deviation, which, uh, in fact, when, you, when you're measuring, you can say that this is the right measure, because everybody will measure the same. But there is the important that which, or which group of people will measure with the smallest standard deviation. And we see that the people with the experience have like small deviation, uh, standard deviation than the people without. Which is like, because the, in, uh, in, in a field where people are like, I mean, this, uh, how do they call it, phyto inspectors, they're like, European Union are giving a lot of money to this, so to train the people. And we wanted to see if it makes sense, because if people without the experience will measure with the same standard deviation as the people without or with, then it doesn't make sense to train or giving this money. We can just take somebody who doesn't have a job and you can measure. But yeah, for, for now we can see that it's, like the differences are there, but are really, really tiny. Okay, so a bit about like discussion about the previous topic, so about the phenotypic plasticity. Uh, my colleague made before the the, the, the research on the haplotype subclinicus, and they were they were trying to find like if there is changes when you when you uh, uh, when you change the the uh, how what will be the, the the changes of the morphometry variables when you change the environment. And the environment means what there was like different temperature, humidity, and food availability. Uh, they chose three diff uh, four different uh, variables, which were like the width and length of the head, and the anterior and posterior pronotonomy. They chose six different localities in Martin's Kiles, which is like one really important locality in like, close to Slovak or uh, close to Bratislava, which had like different uh, conditions. The results found that the the specimens in the ecotone, so between, like, for example, forest and some, some meadow or something, the, the specimens were smaller, but the, the, with the higher quantity. In the forest, like, normally you can find a like, lower temperature and a higher humidity. So we can maybe, like, uh, say that the temperature or lower temperature makes the, uh, make the specimen bigger. It's like Bergman rules that it was like that, and even with the humidity. But just the head width was the only significant variable uh, in, this, in this research. So conclusion is that uh, it's important to measure, from our point of view, to find the triggers of the, of the phenotypic plasticity, and therefore then say that, okay, this can work like the bio indication or, or like a bio indicator. And even we can say that the heavy metals have an influence of the, on the morphometric variables of, of body of the trips. So what are our next three, uh, steps? We will like, continue with the sampling. So on April, we'll start again to go to the field. Uh, we want to measure all the specimens, which are around now like 700. So we, I think that next year we will have like 1,000 like one one more. And uh, we want to also check the what's the content of the heavy metals in the plants. So we will see like how they, like they transfer these, these heavy metals to the bodies <coughs> and also the measure of different species. So maybe this uh, anapotips uh, obscurus and aptinotrius rufus. So see if there is like this, these changes are just on this species or on another one. So thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, I would like to hear them. Okay. Thank you very much for your very informative speech. Please, let's start the discussion. And don't be shy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jakub, mm -hmm. uh, what mythos uh, has most most influence of uh, morphology of uh, trips? Again, in which? Uh, what what metals uh, have uh, most influence of morphology of trips? We think that it's arsenic. 
but we just think it because arsenic was also using for like um, like uh, in the sport like that people want to make a have a bigger muscles so they were using arsenic in this point of view but if you can see that uh, where is it yeah here that the second locality uh, the only and the the, the 6.5 uh, amount of the of the arsenic. So we think that it's this one, but we don't want to say that is it without the, any statistical improvement. But um, we did it, and it looks that it will be arsenic. But now we gave this uh, this data to to one colleague who is like better in the statistics, so he is now like working on it. So we will see. But when we have also the discussion with some other colleagues, there they're like uh, do some research with. Like mainly with the high, uh, with the heavy metals, they said it's probably the arsenic. <laughs> now, yeah, now, now, just the, the the females, because we were measuring even like really, like we measured in one month to just get some results. So we said like it would be better to to have one sex like to measure like one hundred of one, one of the one of the. Yes, because. Um, in the males, there's, there are a lot of apteratons. Yeah, and they don't have also. The characters may be different. Yeah, for sure. We have to change it because this uh, they don't have the, I don't they don't have the the ocelli, for example. They don't have the wings. Yes. They don't have the uh, ovipositor. So it will be like eight at least. So we we have to change it. So that's why we said that we want to measure first the females because we have like more of them. And then we will continue with the with the males. Yes, in the paper uh, on uh, trips to Stephanie and San Jose, we have measured uh, separately for females and yeah. separately for males. Yeah, we will definitely do that. That can be like the next step. <laughs> Another question. As opportunity. Uh, uh, I'm Juan, uh, I'm an expert uh, about morphology, uh, and I would like to know uh, why uh, did you choose um, these features? Uh, because, like, is it standard or something? Like, there, these ones are the really most uh, using one, and even we were checking, like, because uh, another article, they were also measuring the. They were trying to find like difference or using the um, artificial network between 17 species or 18 species, and one of them was Kiyotrus manicatus. So we select the same because somebody did it before, so we said that they're like good enough for us. Are there any other uh, similar studies, but concerning uh, other groups than the Or like you mean in uh, uh, phenotypic plasticity? Yes. Oh, many. <laughs> really, like uh, most, the, a lot of them are uh, like aquatic, mm -hmm. or uh, a lot of are um, bugs, mm -hmm. and yeah, in the science of direct. You, you will find a lot of lot of different articles, and really, uh, trips are some of the, one of them, which is not really like people are not really think or not making really research about the phenotypic plasticity. Like, and other orders are like better on that. What kind of program do you use when you are talking about neural networks? It's called Trojan. It's like, uh, or we were doing it in uh, Statistica, I think, because my colleague was doing this. Mm -hmm. And but I think that you can do it even in uh, like SAS or, or maybe in R. I'm not sure. And but definitely in in Statistica, it's it's, it's possible. But I think Tro Tro Trojan or Trojan is one one of these one. No more questions. <laughs> Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. <laughs>
Teraz dosłownie na temat e, e, ostatniego posiedzenia e, zarządu e, Polskiego Towarzystwa Antropologicznego, ponieważ skończył się rąk, rąk i no, czas na podsumowania. 